Pride was gay pride everywhere you look this weekend with lots of parades, but what you might not know, in fact, what some people marching might not even know, is how those parades got started. It was this night, 40 years ago, in a small dark gay bar in New York City, an event that's being called the Gay Boston Tea Party. This is the 29th annual Pride Week in Toronto, one of the largest street and cultural festivals in the world, celebrating tolerance and acceptance. Now its origins go back to the late 1960s and the start of the gay liberation movement, a fight ignited by riots in a New York bar. Is it fair to say this was the spark though? It's fair to say this is the whole explosion. Now that explosion was in Chelsea, a neighborhood on New York's west side, but it was eventually felt around the world. It started here at the Stonewall Inn. Now it was closed for a couple of decades. It was almost turned into a Starbucks at one point, but this bar is considered by many the birthplace of the modern gay rights movement. Back then, it was against the law to, to have a gay bar. Tommy Lanigan Schmidt was outside the Stonewall June 28, 1969, the night police pulled up to raid the bar. This is one of the few pictures of what became known as the Stonewall riots when gays, lesbians, and drag queens fought back. We have a history that we have to hand down. We're not just a bunch of interior decorators. Step inside the Stonewall today and it's hard to imagine what it was like for gays and lesbians just 40 years ago. Homosexuality was illegal in most states. In fact, it was illegal in Canada until 1969. But in New York, it was underground. A hundred gay men were entrapped a week. You could be arrested for just holding hands or dancing. It was a time when even the governor of California, a future president, thought of homosexuality as a mental disorder. I happen to subscribe to the belief that it is a tragic illness. I know I was a very angry person. They were difficult times to be gay for Stonewall veterans Jerry Hoos and Perry Brass. For most gay people, they were totally embarrassed totally ashamed, totally self-conscious, and very oppressed. The Stonewall in 1969 was the gay bar. The owners paid protection, jokingly called Gayola instead of Paola. Other bars were constantly being raided and patrons arrested, but the Stonewall Inn was safe. That is, until police went in that night in June of 1969. It was a pent-up anger that had been building for years. It started with back talk, then went from people throwing pennies, a reference to the gayola, to people throwing bricks and Molotov cocktails as the crowd grew. People called friends, and, that, and that's added to it. See, once, once, once a bigger, bigger, bigger crowd forms, then the people become more anonymous about their participation. In other words, people get braver then because there's more people to hide in. Police reports made public only recently detail some of the 14 arrests. Four officers were injured. The documents show that while the crowd dispersed at about 4 a.m., the riots continued the next night and on and off for five more. Also just made public a set of photographs taken on the last night by a New York Times photographer. Our history continues to to slip through our fingers. David Carter wrote a book on the riots. He says a big part of it was timing. Gays had watched anti-war protests, the women's lib movement, and Rosa Parks refusing to sit at the back of the bus. Now it was their turn, but they still didn't expect it. Stonewall was spontaneous. When gay people heard about this happening, they were astounded. And pretty much everyone who heard about it locally knew they said things are never going to be the same here again. The movement now had energy. Just days after the riots, gay rights groups like the Gay Liberation Front were formed, then took to the streets. The exact day, June 28th, they had a rally in Washington Square, then they marched to the front of the Stonewall Inn. And that was the first march by a gay group in U.S. history. A year later, another commemoration, a march starting at the Stonewall north to Central Park. Now before the riots, two gay men or women walking together could have been arrested. They were now 5,000 and it wasn't just New York. That weekend there were marches in LA, San Francisco and Chicago. That's Jerry Hoos in the red. We had been threatened. We had been threatened with bombs. We had been threatened with all kinds of violence en route. I was nervous because we were frightened we were going to be arrested. 40 years later, with parades in major cities all around the world, gay pride may be the theme, but it's not how they started. Every year, all those gay marches happen to commemorate this event. They don't happen just because gay people want to have a parade. Stonewall's 40th is a big part of this year's celebrations. These are organizers working on a Stonewall event in Oslo, Norway. Here in Canada, Toronto Pride organizer Mark Sings invited a surviving Stonewall veteran to march in the parade. 
I think about it from time to time, I'll get goosebumps, you know, it's just such a powerful thing to me, what, what happened. Today, there are different battles. Gay marriage is the big one in the headlines, but as one Stonewall veteran put it in 1969, that would have seemed about as likely as pushing for a man on Mars. Forty years later, the Stonewall riots and the people who fought for gay liberty after them paved the way for the people who followed. New Yorker Doug Morris tries not to take his comfortable life for granted. I do think that the people who were involved in the early, the early days of the gay rights movement um, were incredibly courageous and I'm not sure, I always wonder if I would have that kind of courage, I'm not sure I would. I was part of um, changing many, many, probably millions of people's lives in this country and around the world.